Welcome back everyone, Patrick here and moving on to the next video, actually over the next couple of videos, what's going to happen is we're going to solve examples using properties of limits. So I have the properties listed out over here on the left side. So you could write these out, but usually they're listed out in textbooks. And what's going to happen is we're going to be using all of these properties here to solve examples here on the right side. I'm going to go over a couple of examples in the next few videos and I'm going to be constantly referring to these properties to solve these and you're going to run into these probably in your homework at some point. So the example in this video is that we're given the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x equaling negative 1, the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x equals 4 and the limit as x approaches 3 of h of x is equal to 2 and then we have to find each of these limits here using these limit laws, these properties of limits. So one, two, and three. And so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna erase two and three for space to solve number one, and then I'll bring those back once we get to them. So notice that we have the limit as x approaches three of f of x plus h of x all over g of x. So Basically what we have to do is we have to try to convert this expression to be in terms of these expressions. And then if it's in terms of these expressions, then we can just simply substitute those numbers, negative one, two, and four. But to get them in terms of these expressions, we have to use these limit laws over here. So the first thing is notice that this is a rational function where we are adding two functions in the numerator and then we have a single function in the denominator. So out of all of these limit laws, notice that the first one we're gonna use is this one over here. So we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x and we could split that up where that limit we can sort of distribute quote unquote to the numerator and the denominator. So if we take this distributed to the numerator, we'll have f of x plus h of x all over the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. So to get from here to here, the uh, law that I use is number 4. So I'll make a note of that. I use law number 4. And in your textbook, these may be in a different order, so you can adjust this number accordingly to whichever uh, number is listed, whether you have a handout that your teacher or prof gave you or whether you're just referring to the textbook that you are using. But if we're referring to this list that I have up here, then it's uh, number four that we used. And then notice that in the denominator, it's already in this format. So in the denominator, we could plug in four right away, but in the numerator, we can't do that yet because we have the limit as x approaches three of this sort of composite function where we have this f of x plus h of x. So we have to apply another law in the numerator. And the one we would apply is this law here. Because if we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x, this is a plus or minus, but in this case, it's a plus we're dealing with that's going to equal to this limit plus this limit over here. So that's what I'm going to do in the numerator. Limit as x approaches 3 of f of x plus limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. Or sorry, h of x rather. And then we have the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. We could sub in 4 right away at the bottom. And now notice that we could sub in for this negative one, and then for this we could sub in two. So what we would end up having is uh, negative one plus two over four, which gives us uh, one over four. And that ends up being the answer right there, right? So again, you gotta take these expressions and get them in terms of these expressions. And to do that, you have to use these laws here. And sorry, I forgot to mention, from this step to this step, the law that I used was number three. 
and that was used on the numerator. So one over four is the answer to number one. And moving on to number two, we got the limit as x approaches three of three times f of x all over h of x times the square root of g of x. So first step is we're going to apply limit law number four again, because notice this is again a rational function. So we're going to take that limit, give myself some more room in case. So the limit as x approaches three, let's distribute that to the numerator. And then the limit as x approaches three, let's distribute that to the denominator. Right, so from here to here, we use the number four. And then what we can do is in the numerator, notice that we have the limit as x approaches three of three times f of x. So it's a constant times f of x. So if you look at all these laws here, this is the one we could use on the numerator. We got a constant times f of x. That is the limit as x approaches a of a constant times f of x is equal to the constant times the limit as x approaches a of f of x. So we could take that constant and sort of factor it out, quote unquote. So we could take that three, take it out, and then we'll have the limit as x approaches three of f of x. So we use the uh, law number six for that, that's for the numerator. And then for the denominator, notice that we are multiplying two functions here, h of x times the square root of g of x. So what we can do is use this law over here, where when we're multiplying, it's, uh, if we're multiplying two functions, that's the same as the limit as x approaches a of that one function, the first function, times the limit as x approaches a of that other function. So we could rewrite the denominator as the limit as x approaches a of h of x times the limit as x approaches a of the square root of g of x. So uh, we also, so we actually use two laws here, one for the numerator and then uh, we use law number five for the denominator. Right, and we're almost done here because notice that we could plug in a value of negative one for this expression. So that's done. And then we could plug in a value of positive two for this expression. However, this expression is not fully in this format yet. So we gotta work with this part a little bit more. So what do we have here? We got three times, let's plug in that negative one. You don't have to plug it in right away. You could plug it all in at the end. I'm just gonna sort of do it gradually and plug in whenever I can. So limit as x approaches a of h of x, that's two. And then we have to work with this one a little more. So how can we take this and have this expression within it using these laws over here? Now notice that from all of these laws, there's no square root over here. But if you remember the square root of something, that's the same as basically taking something to the power of one over two. It's the same thing. We can uh, just change it to an exponent and then notice we can use this law over here because if we have the limit as, as x approaches a of f of x to the power of something, that's the same as the limit as x approaches a of f of x, all of that to the power of that same exponent. So we can rewrite this part over here as the limit as x approaches, um, sorry, and one thing I just realized is that I was writing a this whole time. I should have been writing three. My bad. So from here, going back to this, we can use this limit law on that. So again, we're going to write this as the limit as x approaches three of g of x, and then all of that is gonna to be to the power of a half. Okay, if you don't wanna change any rational um, or any square roots to rational exponents, you can add maybe another law here. Basically, if you have the limit as x approaches a of the, let's say, nth root of a function, 
that's the same as the limit as x approaches a of that function nth root of all of that. Right, so you can maybe add that to the uh, to the limit laws, but if you take that and you convert it to a rational exponent, one over n, then you would be using this law over here. So that's what I'm using. So from here to here, what I used was uh, law number seven. Let's make a note of that. Keep track of everything. So in the numerator, we got negative three, then we got two. And then notice how here we can make that substitution now. Limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is equal to 4. So we'll have 4 to the power of a half, or the square root of 4, which is 2. So we'll have negative 3 all over 2 times 2, right? 4 to the power of, uh, power to the half is 2. 2 times 2, that's just 4. And so negative 3 over 4 is the answer to uh, number 2. Right, so more complex than number one, we had to use more limit laws in order to get these expressions by themselves. And then finally, number three, we got the limit as x approaches three of f of x to the power of three all over g of x minus h of x in brackets, and that's gonna be to the power of two. So, same thing, notice that this is a rational function, so we're going to be applying law number four first. So we would distribute that limit as x approaches three to the numerator and the denominator. That's going to be squared. Um, so from here to here, we use limit law number four or property number four. Now from here in the uh, numerator, notice that we have a function to an exponent, so we're going to be applying this limit law to the numerator. So we could rewrite that as the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, and then all of that goes to the power of 3. So from there to there, we use uh, law number 7, and then this is where it gets a little tricky uh, with the denominator. That's why I wanted to bring this example up. Notice that we have a minus here in the bracket, but then we have an exponent. So which one are we going to apply first? Are we going to apply this law first, or are we going to apply this law first, where we have a function minus a function? Because notice that is happening. And the answer is you always apply the law to the most outer function. So notice that this f of x minus h of x is in brackets, and then on the outside we have this squared there, right? So we would have to apply this law first, the exponent law. So the way we would do that is um, basically this whole bracket is like this f of x here, right? So we would rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 3, of, um, let me think here, yeah, g of x minus h of x of that function, then all of that goes in a bracket, and all of that is going to go to the power of 2, right? So we applied law number 7 first. We actually applied law number 7 to both the numerator and the denominator, so I'm just going to leave this 7 there. Uh, or maybe I'll put another arrow right there. Right, so be careful with this part where you have sort of multiple functions mixed in. Now, if this instead, I want to make a note on this, if this instead was written as the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x squared minus h of x squared like that, notice that we have to do the minus first, because we're taking this function minusing this function. That's sort of the outside, if that makes sense. So this, we would apply this law first, number three, right? Where we would have limit as x approaches three of g of x squared minus limit as x approaches three of uh, h of x 
squared. And then on these two separate ones, we would apply number seven, right? But it wasn't in this format. It was in this format where this was in a bracket and then the squared was on the outside. So we had to apply that exponent law first, right? So just be careful with, uh, with these types of questions. Basically, you'll get better with more uh, practice. Okay, so we have it in this format, and now notice that on this function inside the bracket, we got the limit as x approaches three of g of x minus h of x. Now we're gonna apply law number three. So here we can make a substitution already because it's in this format. So in the numerator, we'll have negative one to the power of three. And then this is gonna be all over. We're gonna distribute that limit as x approaches three to g of x and h of x. So we'll have limit as x approaches three of g of x minus limit as x approaches three of h of x, and remember all of that is going to be to the power of 2. So from here to here, we applied law number 3. Right? And then, uh, and now we can make a substitution. Notice that we have it in this format, we have this in this format. So we'll have uh, negative 1 to the power of 3, let's just keep that written, um, Limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is 4 minus limit as x approaches 3 of h of x is 2. That's in brackets. That's going to be squared. Negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. And then 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So negative 1 over 4 ends up being the answer for number 3.